Hello! Hi guys, um, this time we're going to be looking at trigonometric graphs and putting them to equations which is going to be helpful for the National 5 curriculum, some of the higher curriculum and possibly GCSE curriculum. And before we go any further, I'm going to say a shout out to Cameron A and also thank you so much everyone for viewing these videos. I'm over a, thou over a thousand views now so keep up the good work. Cheers. Okay, so as we say, we're going to be going from the graph to equation. So looking at putting graphs into actual equations. So here we have a graph here. So this, because it starts in the centre, so in the, from top to bottom, it starts in the centre. So this tells me that it's a sin graph. So it starts in the centre, so that's a sin graph. And when I look up here, <clears throat> we have this kind of format that we're going to put it into. So it's y equals a sin bx plus c. So basically it's the a, the b and the c values that we need to work out. Now when we look down here, to get the a value, if we take the maximum value in the graph and the minimum value of the graph, we subtract them from each other and half it, we'll get the a value. The b value represents how many times the graph repeats or how many times it touches the bottom and the c value is basically the maximum takeaway a or another way to think of it is how much the graph's been moved up or down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start looking at the a value so we've already established that it's a sin graph so i'm going to look at the a value first of all so on this graph the maximum value is negative three and the minimum value is negative 5. So we're doing the max, take away the min. And <clears throat> what we've got is negative 3, take away negative 5. That just becomes plus 5. So negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. When we divide it by 2, we just get 1. So I'm just going to put a 1 value in here just now. The next part B is how many times the graph repeats or how many times it touches the bottom. And on the graph here, you can see it goes round once, twice, three times and touches the bottom three times. So it touches the bottom three times. So it's going to be a three value in there. And the C value, what we have to do is take away the maximum, which is negative three. So sorry, the maximum, which is... Um, yeah, negative 3, and we take away our a value, which is 1, so negative 3 take away 1 is negative 4. So basically our equation of that graph is y equals, we don't really need the 1, we can, we can lose that, but it's y equals sin 3x take away 4. Or y equals 1 sin 3x take away 4, but as I say, you don't normally say the 1 value. Okay, so we're going to try the next one. Okay, so this time we've got a, um, we have another graph and this time what we have to decide first of all is what type of graph it is. So when we look at this one here, this time it starts at the top. It's, it doesn't start in the centre, it starts at the top. So this makes it a cos graph or a cosine graph. So we know that we're going to be looking at this one here. And as before, we're trying to get our A value, our B value, and our C value. So to get our A value, we do the maximum, take away the minimum, and divide it by 2. So in this one here, we can see our maximum is 2, and our minimum is negative 4. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put that up here. I should point out that when you're getting the A, the A is basically the height of the graph from the centre to the top. So if you can see that that's the centre and that's the top, it's basically the length, that, you know, the distance that this travels from here up to here. But we can use the formula if you find that a bit tricky. So 2 take away negative 4 ends up being positive 6. And when you divide that by 2, you get 3. And as you can see there, it's 1, 2, 3 from the top to the middle. So the A value is 3. And this is a cos graph, so I'll put that there. 
The B value is how many times the graph repeats or how many times it touches the bottom. Thinking about how many times it touches the bottom might be easier. So in this graph here, it touches the bottom one, two, three times. So that means that the B value is going to be three. And to get our C value, the C value is basically how much the graph's been moved up or down. So you do the maximum value, which is two, and you take away the A value, which is three. So it's two, take away three, which is negative one. Now, another way to think of that, in a more practical term, is to think that this graph would have started up here, but it's been moved down by one, hence the negative one. Okay, I'm going to do the next graph this time. Okay, this time we've got another graph here, slightly different coloured one, as you can see. Um, and again, we're going to use the same rules. So this time, if you can see, this graph starts in the centre. So this is going to be a sin graph. We're doing our usual, getting our A first, getting our B, getting our C, so that we can put it in this format. So our A value is simply just our maximum, take away our minimum, divided by 2. So in this graph here, our maximum is 3, and our minimum is negative 3. So... Maximum take away minimum is 3 take away negative 3 divided by 2. 3 take away negative 3 becomes 6. And when you divide that by 2, you get 3. Now, we should also note at this point that when you have a graph, when it's both the same number here and here, so when these numbers match, it's basically just going to be that number at the beginning there. Um, our B value is how many times the graph repeats, or how many times it touches the bottom. And in this graph, it touches the bottom one, two, three, four times. So we put a number four here. And the C value is how much it's been moved up or down. Now the maximum is three, and the A value is three. So it's three take away three, which is zero. So actually, the graph just ends, that is, that's the equation of this graph. It's just y equals 3 sin 4x. And looking at the, uh, the graph, the reason you would know that is because this number here, 3 and negative 3 match, which basically tells me that there's not a number on the end there. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next one. Okay, so this time we've got another graph here. And we're going through exactly the same thing. We have to decide if it's a sin or a cos graph. Then we have to work out A, B and C. So the reason we know it's a cos graph is because it starts at the top. So sin starts in the centre, cos starts at the top. So it's a cos graph. And so it's going to be this one we're looking at. And to get our A value, we do the maximum take away the min divided by 2. So this bit, we're just getting the height of the graph from the centre to the top. So basically the distance from the centre to the top. Which you may be able to work out without doing this calculation. But using the formula, we do 4, take away 0, and we half that. So it's 4 divided by 2 is just 2. And then it's a cos graph. And then we have to think how many times the graph repeats or touches the bottom. It touches the bottom twice. And then we have to think, it's basically how much the graph's been moved up or down now. But our maximum value is 4. And we've got to take away our A value, which is 2. So it's going to be 4, take away 2, which gives me... positive 2. So the reason for that, again, is because it's, it's essentially started off here, but that plus 2 has moved it on up to here. Okay, we're ready for our next graph. Okay, so this time we've got yet another graph, and we need to first of all establish whether it's a cosine or a sine graph. And when we just look at this little acetate here, 
it starts at the ha um, it starts at the top, which always tells me that it's a cosine graph. So sine starts in the center, cosine starts at the top. To get our a value, we're doing our maximum, take away our minimum on the graph. The maximum is negative two, and the minimum is negative four. When we work out that calculation, it becomes negative 2 plus 4, which is 2, and then we divide it by 2, which gives us 1. So this is a cosine graph. So we've got a 1 value there. And as you can see in the diagram, the distance from the center to the top is just a difference of 1. B, how many times does the graph repeat or touch the bottom? It touches the bottom 1, 2, 3, four times to put number four in here and then our c value is the maximum take away a so the maximum is negative two and our a value is just one so it's negative two take away one which is negative three And again, we don't really need that one value there. It's just a cause graph. Um, it's just, it's just a no, it is in a sense a regular cause graph, except it's repeating four times and it's been moved down by three. Okay, we're going to do another one. Okay, and this is our next graph here. So this is, a, because it starts in the middle, this is a sin graph. And to get our a value, so we can think of our a in two ways. We can think the, dis the distance from here to here, or using this formula, just the maximum take away the minimum. So 6 take away 2 over 2. 6 to take away 2 is 4. Divided by 2 just gives me 2. So this is a sin graph. And the a value is 2. We then think, how many times does it repeat or touch the bottom? 1, 2, 3 times. So we're almost there. And our c value is our maximum. Take away our a value. So our maximum is 6. Our a value is 2. So 6 take away 2 is 4. And just to recap, you know, normally if it, if it didn't have the plus 4 in the end, it would have started here. So 2 sin 3x would start here. But as it's been moved up by 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is what it looks like. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Please like, please subscribe. Please continue watching and feel free to suggest any other ideas for maths videos that we could be doing. Okay, hope to see you soon. Bye.